All right. Guided surrender. What is it? Let's talk about surrender in general. And I think there's a lot of confusion surrounding just the word surrender. Some people think it's giving up completely and sitting on the couch and eating their favorite nachos and watching binge watching Star Trek or something Mm -hmm. or um, Friends. And then other people understand it. They're like, okay, surrender means I surrender sometimes um, and then sometimes I don't. And they're aware of when they're not surrendering, right? That's a good healthy spirituality is to say, okay, um, I'm letting go of control. That's what surrender is. I'm letting go of control. Sometimes I'm good at it. Sometimes I'm not. But still, I'm aware of it and I'm ascending. I'm awakening. Yeah. My consciousness level is expanding. My Christ consciousness and all that. And then there's just, again, you guys, there's a pendulum swing on just about everything. And so we can take extremes to this. Uh, And we can interpret it through the lens of what we've been conditioned by. So depending on on our upbringing, depending on what our definition of surrender is, letting go. Well, how can you say just let go? And and by the way, that's probably one of the not so good things to say to somebody when they're going through pain. Yeah. Uh, Believe me, I have, I've been married a while. So (laughs) whenever I just say get over it or just let it go. And not in a mean way, but sometimes I've said that flippantly, it doesn't go over well. Because when somebody's hurting, the last thing they want to hear is just let it go. Right. Another thing we're not doing right. <laughs> yeah. Because you're already beating yourself up for the situation you're in or or whatever you're going through emotionally or physically or whatever. And to hear somebody else come and just say, you know, there's a better way to go about it, right? And we all know we got to surrender at some level or not. And and I guess this comes down to just really letting people be in their own process, timing and journey. Um, but what do you do when you get to that point when you finally surrender? And isn't that just like our ego to ask, OK, what do I do now? What do I do now that I'm in? What do I do? Well, that's the whole point. You don't your I you give up the I and it turns into the we, right? The we, meaning I'm surrendering into that that flow of what God is saying. Okay, what are we doing together? What, you know, and just surrendering and being guided versus trying to figure out another way to get out of a situation. You just keep digging yourself further into the hole. Don't we all know that? <laughs> oh, not a fun place it, to be. It, it's not. So again, surrender is not about just letting go into nothingness. Right. And, and sitting there going, okay, fine, I'm, I'm going to give up. Well, just that very statement is really kind of egoic because it's saying, fine, fine. Okay, God, if this is what you want, fine. Or situations or circumstances, fine. I'm just going to let go. We still have control because we're doing it from a place of frustration or anger or resentment. And then we just say, fine. Right. Uh, in other words, we're saying, fine. But if you don't come through for me or fine, I'm just going to lay here then. And then let you do something or yeah. wait I'm for just you give to up. do this outcome. Wait yeah. for you to do this outcome. And then it, it's just like we're just waiting for the eternal doom of that outcome we want not to come about so that we can again claim, see, I knew I couldn't trust you, God. See, this didn't work out. See, but we don't realize how powerful we are with our own energy in and putting our energy on something that now gets activated to an outcome we want. And it ends up just happening in the worst case scenario, right? And then, um, you know, like, oh, life's going to get worse if I lose this job. And then you end up losing the job or life's going to get worse if, you know, I can't get my kids into this certain school. And, and um, why do we always want to focus on the negative and the problem? And that, that's, the, that's the energy game right there. If we can just switch over to what's going well or, or hands in the air like we just don't care because we know God's got a better outcome. And so allowing ourselves to be guided, I guess you could really look at this. We're either allowing ourselves to be guided or we're in the head of our ego trying to figure something out. Which one's more stressful? Yeah. Yeah. And then really it's, it's about being guided. Okay. Is knowing the leads and the prompts from one place and one place only. And that's in the now that's in the current process, a current present moment, not process. 
In fact, process, we're trying to get away from that word, really, because process, it's not about a process. When you tell your kid, your children, um, you're in process. You, know, you just say, hey, you know, you're growing up and, and everything's going to be OK. Yeah. But process is more like a formula a protocol. or a protocol or a methodology. But anyway, just forgive yeah. us for that. We're still I'll learning words, language. Right? Anyway, <laughs> it's just, just words, it's terminology that people are familiar with. But we do Anyhow, like the word unfolding. Yeah, unfolding is cool because what happens when you're in the present moment? And some people get so frustrated by this, by what is the present? What is the now? I'm trying to be now. Well, just the very essence or just by that statement of trying to be in the now <laughs> is effort and it's work. Instead of just, you know, coming to this place in us internally saying, okay, I've tried everything that I know how to do in my own strength. Now I'm handing the reins over yeah. of control. And here's an illustration that I got earlier, just a, just a mental picture that came up. Picture a child that's maybe nine or 10 years old, let's just say. And this is what I saw. So describing this nine or 10 years old. And the child is trying to put together their bike. And they, you know, they, they, they went through and were a good little boy and they read the instructions to the best of their ability. Couldn't figure that out and then tried to use their intuition and their own ability to get the bike pieces together and put them together. Now, dad, being the good dad he is, he stands back and lets them kind of move through their egoic nature until that child says, daddy, I need help. Okay, and then what does the child do? Maybe frustrated, maybe angry, but the dad being a good dad doesn't get upset with that frustration or that anger. Just says, okay, since you just asked me, Dad, I can't do it. I need help. What that means is not holding on to a wrench and then forcing that wrench in when your dad's helping. It's being guided by the dad's knowledge, by the father's knowledge. Okay, Johnny, take that wrench and move it over here and I'm going to put your hand on it and we're going to do this together. Yes. That's being guided in the process of life or in the unfolding of life. If you picture it kind of that way in your own way, that's just my little picture, then you're relinquishing the reins of control over to someone that knows more than you do, that yes. knows yeah. the higher way. And it's enjoyable because now you're being shown the higher way instead of saying, okay, I'm lost. What does that mean to follow the leads and the prompts? Well, when we relinquish the reins, the solution or the help shows up. Yeah, the solution jumps into the boat. Yeah. So speaking of that, uh, you know, just what was it, yesterday, um, you know, we're in a bit of a transition of things and, and <laughs> the Lord does. Mm, sounds to me like you're struggling struggling with a Peter syndrome. And I'm like, oh gosh, Lord, you're right. And and um, he goes, go look it up. And so of course, you know, Luke five, where Peter's been out fishing all night. You know, in the Bible, Luke five, Peter's been out fishing all night, hasn't caught anything. And then um, Jesus says, hey, is it okay? You know, let me just borrow your boat for a little bit. Let's just go out, push out in the deep. Um, and he's just needing the boat to speak to some people and stuff like that. So, and then again, talk, talks to him about, did you know about the catch of the fish? And so he goes, well, just cast your net on the other side and let's go out into the deep, let, let it down. And it's during daytime, right? Common sense says, go cat, you know, go fishing at night when the fish are hungry. And so it says right in the, you know, word there, they toiled all night, not catching anything. And, and it, it, and so, of course, you know, you know the story. He catches a huge harvest of fish so full, you know, their nets are practically breaking. He has to call his friends over to bring in the haul, you know, into the shoreline. And then, of course, Peter's like, I'm an undone man, you know. I'm so used to being in my head and my ego and things not working out. So I need you just to depart from me because this is too good to be true. You know, paraphrased, of course. And um and then you jump forward into John 21, where, you know, this is after um, Jesus died on the cross, raised again. And Peter said, I'm going out fishing, you know. So he's out fishing again all night, not catching anything, right? He reverted back into the egoic nature or back to what he knows, back to what he's familiar. And, and John is with him and some other disciples. And they hear Jesus 
from the shoreline and said, how's the fishing going? Did you catch any fish yet? <laughs> and of course, John the Beloved, who has relationship, right, with the Lord, it says, it's the Lord, it's Jesus. And so Peter snaps to and jumps out of the boat, right, and comes because he's so excited to, you know, see Jesus. And they, at the same time, said, cast your net on the other side. So they're getting a big haul in of fish effortlessly. They're being guided. So what the, what Jesus was talking to me about yesterday and today is just like, you know, a lot of people go into this mindset of obedience and I just need to be obedient to yeah. what God is telling me to do. And it's like this dutiful thing without relationship. And he goes, you know, he goes, I'm not that way. It, really, it's just they're following my wisdom. He goes, if you're willing to just follow my suggestions and my advice and wisdom in this area, you're free to do what you want. You're free to go out fishing. You know, you're free to go out and do whatever. And struggle. But if you'd like to try a different way, da 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 right? And then you see the benefits of it. And so I think with religion, we've had such a skewed understanding of God just being just, you know, hellfire and brimstone because it's come through an egoic preacher or a man conveying that God's that way. And he's never, you look at what it says about the true essence of God. He is unconditional love, non-judgmental, you know, a closer friend than a brother. Fruit of the spirit. Just, oh yeah. And so if you really want to approach this thing as just this guided surrender, that's what it comes down to. It's a relational flow. You're free to get out there and paddle your way upstream, but you're going against the flow of your spirit and you know it because your ego is saying, I've got to get to the top of this thing. I've got to climb the ladder. I've got to get to the top of this thing. And you're splashing and struggling and huffing and puffing and it's just not working. But when you surrender and you paddles up and you allow yourself to be guided by that inner voice, you know, of your spirit, of suggestions. And you always know it's a gentle, still voice suggesting to you the way. Yeah. And, you know, that's so good. They, when A lot of you know, when I uh, mentioned this before, but when I, I used to love uh, rafting as a kid and teenager specifically, we'd go all the time in the summer and we had these big, massive truck inner tubes and we would jump in them and we would let the current guide us. You know, the the not so fun thing to do was having to paddle and get rubber burns on your arms on the <laughs> underneath on the side right. <laughs> under your arm, because you're paddling so hard to try to get back into the center of the current. That wasn't the fun thing to do. The fun thing to do was allow the current to take you. And guess what? The rubber on the inner tube would protect you most of the time, unless you're doing something really crazy. Again, that's the egoic nature wanting to do something crazy. Right. But because if you allow the current and the tube of protection, which is God's grace and his His oneness in us, yeah. protecting us because he's guiding us. The current is the spirit of God. The spirit of God guides us, mm -hmm. but it takes a completely let, complete, complete letting go mm -hmm. into surrender. So it's like one, one guy said that we listened to said, now, if you're still worried about the money, you haven't truly surrendered. If you're still worrying about how it's going to show up, you haven't surrendered. Right. If you're worried about whether this girl is going to like you, this guy's going to like you, and you keep checking your your account online, your dating match, match.com, <laughs> keep checking it and checking it. Where's my messages? Where's right. the messages? Then you haven't or surrendered. Or indeed.com. <laughs> indeed.com, checking to see if anybody messages, checking your email every five minutes. The list goes on, right? Then you haven't surrendered. Right. Surrender means burning the ships. You the heard the ships of outcome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, your ships of outcome. Yes. And you've heard the the terminology about burning the ships. It's a great story. Well, it's true. When you go to an island and then you have no way, you you want no other place but to be on that island and then no way off of it, so that you can make it, make a life for yourself there. Then what do you do? You burn the ships so that there's no going back. There's no going back to the egoic nature. And so, listen, you guys, we, we struggle just like the best of them. And, and we're, we're in that unfolding, maturing phase as well. So we're in and out of this just like everybody else, but we're learning to become more aware yeah. of when we're in and out of it. That's, that's, huge. that's huge. Do you know how awareness. huge that is? Awareness is huge. 95% success. Awareness. 95%. And it's huge because when we're aware, then we can actually 
continue to practice. And then when we practice this, it becomes more strength inside of us to stand, to wax strong in spirit. When, you know, one scripture so to wax strong in spirit, what does that mean? It means to, the more I surrender, then the more I, I gain that spiritual muscle waxing strong so that it just becomes second nature. And that's my default yeah. mechanism. And then in science, you know, with the brain, new neural neurological pathways are being formed. So you're leaving the old so that that can kind of um, deconstruct and disappear so that the new pathway can be formed. So not only are you becoming aware to this current within you, your brain is now learning how to match up and recognize that current to start flowing in it versus the old patterns and habits and programs of the ego saying, don't get in that stream. You can't give up control. You know what it means when you give up control. You know what they're going to say about you when you give up control. You got to control, control. You got, you know, you got to know what you're doing and, yeah. and uh, call the shots and figure it out. And we all know, oh my gosh, burnout is straight ahead, right? And so that's, yeah. this is the relief of paddles up, let the current take you, dropping down into the heart-centered, effortless flow of life in him. You know, God knows what we agreed to before we came, and we all have his spirit within us. You know, some are at a dim level, some are at a bright level. It's all where you're at in your journey, you know, but we can all tap in and just listen. And it's just no different than, right, the cork, being inside of you. Once you let the pressure off of you trying to figure things out, it floats up to the surface and you can start seeing clearly and kind of follow where it's floating, so to speak. And um, But a lot of people are like, well, I can't just surrender my life to chance. Well, I can't do that. Well, you're not just surrendering your life to chance. That's why you've got that inner leads and prompts that are guiding you. You know, trust your vibes, as it says, you know, you just, you got to follow those leads and prompts. You are being guided. A lot of times we, we are just unconscious to it, you know, or we've put a different title to it, you know, again, like, oh, I just don't feel good about that. I got a gut check or, you know, that's still, that's your inner guidance. Yeah. That's the current trying to talk to you. <laughs> you know? It really is. Jump in the stream. It, but because we're not patient enough, you know, yeah. sometimes we get so concerned and we've done this ourselves. It's like, okay, well, if I completely surrender, then, you know, uh, what if if I don't get a job or what if the business doesn't work out or where's the income coming? And then the integrity part of this, Mm -hmm. it's like, okay, if my bills don't get paid, then how am I a witness? How am I a good witness? How am I being integral if the rent doesn't get paid and it's behind three months? Um, those are all, you know, genuinely, cons- genuine concerns from the egoic nature. But in the spirit, it works much differently. So the question is, did you get into the credit cards by the egoic nature? Because you had to have something right now. Hey, we've been guilty of that. And there's no condemnation. It's just we've been guilty. Okay, credit cards. I want something now. Time payments on cars. I want something now. Uh, mortgage payments. Well, I didn't have the cash to pay it off. So isn't this what everybody does? Like, okay, God gave me this car. No, he didn't. Your your egoic nature did because you still owe money on it. Now, if it's a free and clear title, then God did give it to you, right? Let's be real about this, you guys. Mm -hmm. Let's be really real about it because we're having to face this ourselves in many different ways. And so the what if what if it what if we need to be behind in the rent? What if we need to lose the credit cards? What if we need to jack the credit up? Well, it, where is it birthed in spirit or egoic nature? Right. And that's the pain. That's mm-hmm. the pain, the suffering. Of the death sometimes of we image. need to sometimes we need to suffer out of things that were birthed out of the ego in order to place us in alignment in the spirit so that God can give it to us free and clear. Right. And I know that's hard to hear, but it's true. And you know it's true. Mm -hmm. And sometimes, you know, of course, don't just let everything fly. You know, this is why it's guided surrender. Yes. Oftentimes, God will save face in that because of his great mercy and not allow us to mess up the integral part of that, to be integrous. But sometimes it needs to unravel. Right. And, and, and hit the ground. Mm-hmm. And where things are just out of your out of your control, you know, something happened, it kind of blindsided you and now it's out of your control. And now you're get you're put in a situation yes. where you're falling behind. 
And the hardest thing for the ego is like, this is, this is a mark against my good character. And oh my gosh, now, you know, they're going to think differently about me and, you know, or my landlord or this or kind of, you know, and we've had this happen to us. This is amazing thing. So uh, when you really detach from the outcome um, and just be guided because it's oh, the yeah, things the you can't. Landlords yes. have been merciful. Yeah, that's my point. The things you can't control. You can't predict how your landlord's going to handle if you're behind one month on rent. And we had a situation in the past where it was out of our control again, and it, we got behind a month or two, and we're like, oh my gosh, Lord, where are you in this? We're learning this whole thing right now. Where are you? You're supposed to, you're supposed to come through on time. <laughs> your image is at stake. My image is at stake. And But the amazing thing what happened is... God moved upon our landlord with such amazing grace that he goes, oh, you guys, you know what? I put myself in your situation and I, my heart just so just was for you guys. And, and I just, you know, I knew you'd come through. I knew something would work out. It was no problem. No problem. You know, I mean, he was just so gracious. And he says, he's like, Hey, I will rent to you guys anytime. If you ever need a good reference or anything. And it was just, it was amazing. Yeah. And, and that was something we couldn't have controlled or predicted or manipulated, right? Yeah. Now let's <laughs> let's break that down a little bit uh, because some people might say, well, that's good for you, but it didn't happen that way for me. Yeah. Now, if you dissect this a little bit as to why that may have went so sideways for you, it's because of the many elements involved in the egoic side of things. Some people will sit there. Let's just paint the picture. Yeah. Some people will sit there and say, um, yeah, I have these opportunities before me, but I just want to lay here and wait for this, just the perfect scenario. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm not going to do anything to follow the leads and the prompts. That's one scenario. Another one is um, it habitually happens and you're late on rent all the time and you're like, um, I don't care what they think. You know, that's just the way it is. Maybe I'll have the money. Maybe I won't. I'm going to use my rent to go uh, buy uh, some clothes or whatever. What my ego wants. What my ego wants. <laughs> and all of those things, what they do is they create an opening of... Uh, hard knocks. Of, of hard knocks. <laughs> but they, they, op they create an opening to allow the resistance to come in and it actually builds resistance because you're not in the current. It's like the boulders in the river. Well, if you keep slamming into them for a reason, it's because there's still egoic stuff involved, you know, because if we have a bad attitude, where is that birthed out of? That's the egoic nature. Yeah, if we just, if we just say, I don't care, I don't care what the landlord thinks, then that I guarantee you that is not coming from the spirit. Mm -hmm. It's not coming from the current it's right. the current now. It's coming from the egoic nature of some something that happened in the past that keeps coming up. So you want to follow these warning signs as well and look at them. Stand there and look at them and say, okay, wait a minute. Is there is this a pattern in my life from the past? Or am I truly in a situation to where it's the beginning of COVID? You know, if you're, you know, just talking about going back to COVID here. Speaking of COVID and my company downsized and now I'm out of work. And so now you're sitting there going, okay, what's next? Now you can either run out to Indeed, you get on Indeed and throw a bunch of resumes out there in panic and fear, hoping you're going to land something because your mama said, uh, you work <laughs> you or you don't eat. eat. <laughs> you work or you don't eat, son. And you have that mindset, then guess what? You might wind up with a $15 an hour job that you can't stand and you're trying to make it through, trying to have a good attitude saying, well, God just wants me to have a good attitude and blah, 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 blah. Forget it. Right. So the best thing to do, throw your hands in the air, paddles up and say, let the current take me. Yeah. And then watch opportunities show up or something you never even thought of before. Right. This is where you have to be open. Yeah. Yeah. Totally have to be open because again, this is expansion outside of your sandbox of, I know everything in this corner of the sandbox. I've got it maintained. This is my absolute. Don't mess with it. And God is like, well, but you didn't see this part that you agreed to before we came down that this, this is the next, this is the next phase. This is the next phase of your development. Enter at your own risk. No, <laughs> but, um, yeah, anyway, true. so it's like, 
I think the what it comes down to is the most important thing is are we connected or are we not? Are we connected to source? Are we connected to God? Are we connected to the divine? Are we listening? Otherwise, we're going to keep going around the same mountain till we fully surrender and listen to that inner voice. Listen to the leads and prompts and and really start trusting what we're feeling inside. I mean, we've all heard stories of people living in such regret because they did not trust those inner gut prompts and they let their ego override it because the job looked so good, the pay looked so good, but it wasn't what their heart was telling them. And they ended up taking the egoic opportunity and the company goes bankrupt in two weeks and now they're really, oh. you know, in a rough spot. So, so it's it's a inner working and inner lesson to get you to really start trusting those inner prompts and let the current take you. And, you know, John was talking about if you're bumping into the rocks. Well, this is something, you know, God was showing me the other day. He goes, people have a choice. They can either go about the path with the ego where there is no river of life flowing and they are slipping in the mud. They can't see because they're down in the rocks and they are just egoically forging ahead. Or you can sit back, rest, and allow the spirit to fill in and flow and let the current start lifting you up above the rocks, up above the obstacles and tough places to where you can now see clearly. Not only can you see clearly, but he's now carrying you up and above and you just roll over the rocks. So there's there's these two paths in life, really. And it's your choice on what you want to experience. Yeah. And and really, it's such a good an analogy because oftentimes what the wounded soul will say is, I want attention because I wasn't seen at some point in my right. life. And so they'll keep putting themselves in situations because they think it gets sympathy. Now, some mama might give them sympathy, but most people look at it and say, what in the world is wrong with you? You know, because, you know, it's right versus wrong in the ego. So they'll, right. that's the first thing we say is, what's wrong with you? Why can't you get it together, girl? You know, and 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 then you're just, well, isn't anybody going to give me sympathy anymore? I want to be seen instead of really allowing the present moment to heal that part of your soul, the part of that life trauma that's happened so that the crack of light can begin to break away the shards of darkness around you. And then the crack becomes becomes uh, more seen and then it becomes a flooded light in your life. And then you rise above the rocks. Then the current takes you and you're like, whoa, no effort of my own. Here we go. I didn't need to get sympathy. I didn't need to be seen because I was already seen. I just didn't know that I was seen. Right. You know, anybody that cries out, I need to be seen. I've been abandoned. I've been rejected. I've been abused. That is the ego saying, let me drive the car. Mm -hmm. But you can't allow it to drive the car anymore if you want a different result. Yeah. Right. If you allow that little wounded child to drive before it's time to do before the age to drive, like at 14, allowing that little punk that's been wounded to not be the punk anymore. And and you want to send it love. You don't want to, you know, reject it even more so, but you want to send love by saying, listen, little Bobby, little Susie, little Johnny, little Shaniqua, uh, listen. You just can't drive the car right now. Why not? I want to drive the car. I know what well, I'm doing. <laughs> because I need to show you a few things right now. And it's just not time. Now, I can show you a few things on the dash. I can show you how this works from a distance here. But what I really want is for you to allow me to drive the car to where we're going. And so you can enjoy the journey in the back seat. Yeah. Now, in the back seat, I don't need you to be a back seat driver. And get a center wreck because you're screaming and you're trying to pull on my hair to say, let me drive. It's just not time yet. See, our ego doesn't want to hear that. But the truth of the matter is, is that there is an unfolding that happens. And when it's time, it's time. Let the current take. You get to wherever it is you're going. And that's where we're going is in the present moment of the now. That's where we're landing is in the now. So it's always unfolding. There is no end to this thing, you guys. That's exactly right. You're an eternal being. You're, you know, this is just one level. <laughs> this is one level of your development when you look at this as a whole. And so, um, you know, when we come back here to the whole just guided surrender, 
And in the most basic form, you are surrendering into guidance. Doesn't that sound so much better? It's awesome. You're surrendering into guidance. You're not alone. You're only alone if you believe you're alone. The ego tries to lie to you and tell you you're alone. It's me, myself, and I, and I got to make this work. And that's where we end up coming down to the surrender into guidance. And it's just so much better because we only see in part. You know, it's it's foolishness. So we've all seen it. You know, if you lived any stint of life, how all the dreams you thought you were going to have or things you thought you wanted or that you want to do, they end up changing down the road as you become more mature. And you're like, wow, I'm glad I didn't go down that path. I'm glad I decided I didn't want to go down that route. And it's just with you've heard it over and over with so many people like, man, I'm at a place in my life now. I, I never thought I'd be doing what I'm doing in a really good way. And, or you'll always hear them say, man, the universe had bigger plans for me than I did. Or God had bigger plans than I did. And it's so true. If we will just paddles up, we surrender into guidance, God will get you there, you know, in a way better way, through way better connections, always in through like some back door or, or just something you can't predict. So save yourself a whole lot of effort, a whole lot of stress and stop trying to predict the outcome, right? Surrender into guidance. Yeah, and it's an ongoing thing for all of us. Yeah. Believe us, it's not something that we usually get overnight, although that would be awesome. And it could be, it could be, depending on the level of doneness yeah. <laughs> that we're in in our lives. And and just before we wrap this up, um, what you don't want to be in is a posture of like some tragedy happening, right. uh, some accident to get you to surrender. And man, oh man, have we seen that a lot. Yeah. Joe Dispenza says, why wait why? until you're at that point? Yeah. Why wait for the tragedy? We don't have to wait right. for the hardships or the su more suffering. Why would we want more suffering when we can do it now in our free will just to say, okay, I don't know what this looks like really um, maybe this helped what John, John and Amy said, but to me, it's individual and God help me to surrender, to know right. what it means. It's as simple as that. It's as simple as God help. Yeah. And I mean, that is one of the most powerful prayers, powerful de declarations honest, we can even say honesty. is honest, God help me. Yeah. And when we stay in that, not going and picking it up and getting on Indeed again or going up and getting on the phone and say, why did you leave me? Why did you leave me? None of that stuff, but just say, you know what? I'm going to remain in a posture of God help until, and I don't know. <laughs> until the guidance shows up. You remember the story about Moses. Those of you that don't know the story, Moses is facing the Red Sea and he's got a whole army of Egyptians after him that want to slice him into a million pieces. Okay. His back's against the Red Sea wall. He has nowhere to go and he's leading a million people out of bondage. So he's standing there. What does he do? He says, okay, God, you know the situation. What do I do? And God's response is, stand still yes. and watch what I do. And paddles up. <laughs> stand still, he paddles raises. up, and watch what I do. So he starts splitting the sea open supernaturally. There's the prompt, a big one, I might add, but there's the lead in the prompt. There's the guiding. Yeah. He guides and say, okay, I'm splitting the sea open. You only have one way to go here, so now you're going to have to trust the current. Trust that the current stay back and don't drown you, but also trust the current of my leading through the mud to the other side. And and guess what happens? He does it. But he the, the prerequisite to this, so to speak, is stand still. And stay listen. still. And listen. Yeah. And yeah. let the unfolding take place. We, we just so squirmish. We don't want to do that. But it's time. You know yeah. it's time. We know it's time. It's all time. It will reveal itself. But see, and he, again, that was an outcome Moses would have never been able to figure no out. Way. What in the world? The sea's opening up and I can walk through it. Come again, <laughs> you know? Yeah. But he's put in a pressured moment where it's his only option. And okay, all right, God, I'm trusting you. And in we go. And it's yeah, just even amazing. if you even if you have a million voices bearing down on you saying you, You're crazy. you know, hey, we're going to kill you, we're going to take you out. And, you know, you know, that was a situation like uh, we're going to just surrender and go back to the meat that we were eating in Egypt mm -hmm. because it was better than this. And so you, you've got imagine that a million people literally in your not just on social media, but in your face saying we if you don't do something, we're going to take you out, buddy. 
And he's like, God, what do I do? Stand still. Watch what I do. Because what happened? He released the resistance so that the blessing could come flooding in. Yeah. So that the answers could show up. And he felt the current within him that manifested into the splitting of the current outside. There it is. So you've got to feel this. In, it's an internal manifestation first before it unfolds on the outside. And so just to want to encourage you, be patient. Be patient in the in the timing of things because it really does come down to timing. Oh, it's everything. And just, you know, again, you know, it can come down to a matter of when you stop doubting and start believing. That's one area, right, that kind of shortens it <laughs> when you detach to the outcome. But, you know, our good online buddy um, Kyle Cease brought up a great point the other day when he had a, he had a call in. And this woman was panicking about, like, my rent's due, you know, on, on the 21st. And it's, what was it? it he's, she still had, like, oh, no, yeah, 15, it was, a, it was a third. No, it was a third of the month. Yeah. Uh, I believe. And then it was, like, the 20. She Seventh, needed, yeah. There was no, she needed rent by the, for the next month, right? Mm -hmm. So it's only the third. She's just like, well, what are you worried about? It's only the third. Well, what, but what if it's late? See, what, what we do, it's like, yeah, I need it now to feel okay. And he's like, and he was like, how do you even predict what will happen tomorrow? You've got, you've got umpteen days until the end of this month for your rent to come through. And then, and then it was funny because she ends up calling back the next month uh, and she goes, here's my problem now is that, I had more than enough show up the show previous up month that covered the rent <laughs> and now I'm afraid I'm going to I'm spending it on the wrong thing so she was addicted to the story of the problem she's addicted to that um adrenaline rush almost of yeah. just being in that what if what if what if you know and survival. and survival but it was amazing though just his point right why are we needing it to happen today when we, to feel when okay? when the goal is to live in the now mm -hmm. so the goal is to live in the now and if we're living in the now, then there is no tomorrow. Yeah, so See, really like, your life is like a vapor here today, gone tomorrow. We're not promised tomorrow. So if we're living life in today, then everything that's supplied today is for today. So take no thought for tomorrow. What, what does that, what does that say? We've mentioned this before. What God showed me was the taking part of that. The ego always wants to take it, never wants to give. Mm -hmm. So it's taking a thought from survival into tomorrow what he's saying is don't do that yeah there's no grace for it you only have grace for today right as it's living in the in today's grace and so much more freeing knowing that everything is being taken care of you know it's just like a, the good old slogan everything is working out for me you know yeah. and everything it, is always working out for me yeah even if the circumstances show something entirely different mm -hmm. this is where Dialing it down to live in the present moment. It yeah. means everything. The energy and game. Just practice it. <laughs> it takes takes a minute, but <laughs> just practice and yeah. keep doing it. And then we'll Sorry. be here to encourage you along the way. Yeah. And just know that we understand yes. uh, the journey more than you think we do. Um, you know, we're not experts by any means. We're not claiming to be. We we still we're still learning all the time. And that's the beauty of it. Uh, learning doesn't mean that you just learn something and become a PhD or an expert at it and you're done. No, no, no. This is a this is a marathon. This is a lifelong journey down the river of life, paddles mm -hmm. up, letting be the beauty of an endless river give you its supply of just awe and wonder as we yeah. as we move down the current. And then guess what's at the at the end of the river? A vast ocean that's just full of bountiful and yeah. abundant. So, yeah, so paddles up, paddles you, up. Just keep surrendering to the guidance without an outcome attached. Just stay in the flow of right now. Whatever calls to you in the moment, just follow that and you'll end up at the right place. Yep. Which is the now. Yes. <laughs> All right. All right. All. Take care you. until next time. <laughs> Bye.